This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Members and visitors alike, know that you are loved, you are valued, and you are welcome as we worship the living God together. For those worshiping in person, you have your bulletins in hand, your hymnals are in the pew pocket in front of you. For all joining us in cyberspace on Facebook Live, our bulletin and hymns for the day are located under worship resources on the home page of our church website. We do invite all worshiping in person to fill out the friendship pad in the pew pocket in front of you or on the side of your pew. And all worshiping with us, whether you're worshiping with us here on Sunday morning or on Wednesday afternoon while you're on your walk, we invite for you to comment to let us know that you are part of our worshiping community this Sabbath day. Today we will be celebrating two sacraments. It is a full Presbyterian USA Church Day. We're going to celebrate communion. We're going to celebrate baptism. We're talking about Epiphany and Transfiguration and Lent. And we have a session meeting today. It is full of being Presbyterian today. So we rejoice. So all who are worshiping with us at home, we do invite you to prepare bread and cup for the sacrament of communion. And for all worshiping with us in person, you should have received a shell. And this is for our baptism in a time when we cannot hug and love and get all in baby Michael's face. This is an invitation to write a prayer, to write a blessing for Michael on this here baptism day. So that is why you are handed a shell upon your entry. This, this uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and we will participate in the imposition of ashes. You are more than welcome to come over outside the fellowship hall on Wednesday from noon to one for our drive through ashes. Or you may join us at 6 p.m. on Ash Wednesday here in our sanctuary for an Ash Wednesday service where we will praise God as we enter this season of Lent. We will be joining with our brothers and sisters from the Methodist tradition, and we hope that you will join us. We will have the regular imposition of ashes as well as a COVID-friendly way of receiving the ashes. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent, and so today you can pick up our Lenten devotional in the narthex as you depart. You may also find it online if you do not want to take one that we have printed. You also will find a really fun, purple is the color of Lent, my friends, a calendar with a word for the day, a word that you can reflect upon throughout your day, a breath prayer, so to speak. So these calendars, as well as the full to the brim devotionals are available for you in the narthex, and all of it is also located on our website. I do want to extend an invitation. If you have any new neighbors that have moved into your neighborhood, we want to welcome them. So if a new neighbor has moved in and you've already done the good southern hospitality thing of delivering some banana bread, I need you then to contact me so that our church can welcome them to Newton County and to Covington. So please make us aware of any new neighbors you might have. One more announcement, we are participating with Good Shepherd Episcopal Church as well as Oxford College in helping our community with a warming center for our siblings in Christ who are experiencing homelessness or are in the need of a warm place to stay at night and a yummy meal. So you will see a sign up genius in our weekly e-news. You can sign up to deliver the meals, to prepare the meals, to order it from the restaurant if you would like. It does not have to be homemade. But we do need all the hands and feet of Christ to participate in caring for our neighbors. With that, dear friends, yes, session is meeting following worship. So we ask for your prayers for the servant leaders of our congregation. And I invite you to stand and join me in the call to worship printed in our worship guide. The Lord is king. Let the people, the peoples tremble. He is sent enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let us praise your great and awesome name. 
Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Let us worship, holy God. In Luke's account of the events on the Mount of Transfiguration lies an interesting parallel that calls out our own sin. The writer of Luke says that Peter and his companions, John and James, were weighed down by sleep, but they stayed awake and saw Jesus' glory. They fought through the sleep for this, but later, in the Garden of Gethsemane, they would give in to sleep in the midst of Jesus' agony. Let us confess the ways that we too fight to be wide awake when we know we will see God's glory, the beauty and magnificence of God in the earth. But we give in to sleep when the heart of God is in agony. Join me in the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Mystery of mysteries, hide not your face from us. Hear our confession and forgive us of sin. We go to the mountains to escape our involvement. We hear your commandments then hide from their truth. We disguise our faces to conceal our identities. Christ unmasks our pretense and strips us of pride. Help us not to be afraid to encounter your presence and through Christ to stand before you cleansed of our sin, amen. This is the good news, that God will continue to give us ears to hear and eyes to see both the goodness and the agony. We praise God for the goodness and for the opportunity to bring the light of God into the agony. Church, we have not run out of chances to be light in the world, to wake up and to put God on display in dark places. Church, we are forgiven. We are free to try again.
just as God extends peace to us through Jesus Christ, we are called and invited to extend peace to one another. So I invite you to place your worship guides beside you and dance with me. I invite you to first put your hands over your heart, extend them forward, hands over your heart, and extend them out into the world. So may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite all of our children, young and young at heart, to come join me on a dot up front. Come on, my friends. It is good to see you this morning. Come on. These are my new friends. Come on, new friends. You know, just grab a dot. You see one of those dots? You can sit on one of the dots right there. Perfect. Sit on the dot. There you go. You can take it home later, too, if you want to. That's fine. Oh, my goodness, my friends. It is a joy to see you all today. And let's see. This is Micah and Mary, our church mice. And it looks as if they've gotten into the craft closet and full of all kinds of fun things up here. Let's see. First, there's a baptismal candle for baby Michael, which we're going to talk about that in a minute. But here, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Whew. How many of these paper chains do you think there are here? Anybody know? You want to take a guess? 100. Oh, my goodness. 100? What about over here? How many? 40? Hold and know something. Hold and know something. These are the days. You're exactly right, Holden. I'm so proud of you. These day, these, this paper chain represents all the days in Lent. And Lent is a time when we read our Bible and we read about the stories of Jesus and how Jesus journeyed to the cross. And then Lent ends. There's a really special Sunday and we wear our beautiful something dresses. And sometimes there's a bunny at some of these things. Easter! There's a special Sunday called Easter Sunday where we wear our Easter best. Good job! We celebrate Jesus! You're exactly right! It's when Jesus says, guess what Jesus says on Easter Sunday? I love you, and nothing can separate you from how much I love you. So Easter Sunday is a grand day of great joy in the church and in our lives as disciples, as people who love God. But we have to get there first, don't we? So today, after the baptism... Elisa and I are going to give you your very own 40 Days of Lent countdown. And so every day, starting Ash Wednesday, you'll take one off. And when you take one off, you can write a prayer for someone. And so when you're done, you'll have all these prayers and people you've prayed for throughout the season of Lent. There's more. Y'all ready? You're getting a goodie bag today. How fun is that? So you're also going to get a placemat. And all these bags, these are going home with you. In these bags, there's a placemat, and there are symbols that each day, in, on Sundays during Lent, that you can place on your placemat. Look. Oh, I messed up on my microphone. And you put it here. So on Wednesday of this week is Ash Wednesday, where we put, we put stuff on our foreheads. And that stuff on our foreheads reminds us how much God loves us, too. So when you get home and have dinner on Ash Wednesday, when you're at your table, you can add this little piece. And then the next Sunday, there'll be another piece. And we have a book that helps you. It says FPC Kids, a book that guides you in which pieces to add to your placemat. Do you all think you can do that? And so throughout Lent, when we participate in these activities, we are focusing on God and listening for God as we talk to God in various ways. So let us give thanks that we get to have 40 days of talking to God and reading the Bible and doing really fun activities so on Easter morning we can rejoice at the empty tomb. But before I give you your kits, I need y'all's help. Can y'all help me this morning? We're about to baptize a baby and we are going to splash in this water. But I need your help before we splash in the water, okay? Because when we baptize someone, we tell them you are part of our family, our big church family. So we need your help, right? Because y'all know the best hiding places in the church. 
You know where the chocolate is or who has candy in their pockets in the sanctuary. You all know that, and we've got to teach that to Michael. So I'm going to ask y'all a question in just a minute, and I need y'all to say yes as loud as you can. Y'all yeah. want to practice? All right, let's practice. Ready? On the count of three, shout yes, okay? One, two. Yes, Michael, you're already doing it. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. Yes! Wonderful, wonderful. So with that, friends, if you'll stay seated on your dot, and I invite Kayla and Luke forward, as well as baby Michael and Elder Denny and Elder Alex. If you'll come forward, please. Hey, big boy. <laughs> you ready to splash in the water? Are you ready? All right, let's listen to, hey, sweet boy, hey. Let's look at what the Bible says, okay? And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, I feel like I should sing to him. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always until the end of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident in his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In this sacrament, the love of God is offered to each one of us. Though we cannot understand it or explain it, we are called to accept that love with the openness and joy and trust of a child. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church. I'm playing it. Yeah, all. Okay, hey. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ and joined in Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. In baptism, Michael is assured of the love that God has for him, and the sign and seal of the Holy Spirit is placed upon him. So now turning to the parents. Do you desire that Michael be baptized? If so, please say, we do. We do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith? and to teach that faith to your child? If so, please say, we do. we do. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, please say, we do. We do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his help? If so, please say, I will with God's help. Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers? If so, please say, I will, with God's help. I will, with God's help. And now invite Elder Denny Dobbs to give our congregational question. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Michael Alexander by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's church. If so, please say, we do. I now invite our children who are going to teach Michael all where all the glitter is and about God's love and where to find his worship bag and how to crawl under the pews. I need you all to help me. Will you promise to share God's love with Michael? If so, I need a big yes. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> I think he heard you guys. I think he heard you guys. Now turning to PCUSA elder Alex Edwards for our prayer. Let us pray. God of love, we rejoice again to receive your grace in word and sacrament. We have heard your call and are made new by your spirit. Guide and guard Michael Alexander all in his days. May your love hold him, your truth guide him, your joy delight him. Bless the community 
that surrounds him with love and grace and wisdom and strength and a recognition that all good gifts come from you. Gracious God, pour out your spirit. We pray upon Ale Michael Alexander, upon us, and upon this water, this is the f that this font may be the fountain of deliverance and rebirth. May the one who now passes through these waters be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, all the sake of Jesus Christ the, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit on God, in God now and forever. Amen. Amen. What is the Christian name of your child? Michael Alexander Dahl. All right, Michael Alexander. Love your sweet Brinley. Michael Alexander, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. You, sweet boy, are marked as Christ's own forever. And all God's children say, Amen. You, Michael, are marked as Christ's own forever. Welcome into this family of faith. Do you see all these children? You see everybody? And your family here, look, there's grandmothers. They're right there. So with your baptism, with this church, so, yes, you tell us. What do you think about this? What do you think? With us saying yes, look, who's that? Those grandpas? With us saying yes to your baptism, my love, we have promised, we have vowed to love you and to nurture you in the faith. And all of these people gathered here and on Facebook Live right now have said yes to loving you and teaching you about God's love. And you know what's beautiful about God's love? Nothing in the whole wide world, my precious one, can separate you from God's love. And I think this church did a pretty good job teaching your daddy that, sharing the faith with your dad as he grew up in this church. And now your mommy and your daddy, yes, you're talking about your daddy? Yes, and now your mommy and your daddy want you to know the joy, the joy of Christian fellowship, the joy of Christian discipleship. And all of the children who've worn this gown before you, they know that joy because of the family of faith that you are being brought up in. So may we remember this holy, holy day as we have all said yes to loving this baby boy. There's a choir. Are you going to sing in the choir? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> as we have said yes to you, beloved child of God, Michael. May you know that you are deeply, deeply loved. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I've got one more thing to say to you, sweet boy. Let's listen and hear this for all of us today. Little child, for you, Jesus Christ, came. He struggled. He suffered. For you, he endured the darkness of Gethsemane and the agony of Calvary. For you, Michael, he triumphed over death. And all this happened before you were even born and before you could understand. And therein is confirmed the word of the apostle. We love because God first loved us. So you're going to get to go home, Michael, and have some bedtime stories from the children of the church. So we have two books for you to read Maybe your family. Can y'all help read these today, maybe? Y'all can start today. There's some books for you, sweet Michael, and a baptismal candle. You can light this every year on your baptism to remember and give thanks. Maybe that will chew toy. You may hold that down. <laughs> and here's your baptism certificate. You got it? God loves you, sweet boy. You want to eat the candle? <laughs> With that, church family, I invite you to stand and sing our congregational response as our children go to wiggle and giggle in the pews or in the nursery.
Let us pray. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Our Old Testament scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 39, verse, or 34, excuse me, verses 29 through 35. Hear now the word of the Lord. Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin on his, of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord with, had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. This ends the reading of our Old Testament passage. We'll now turn to the Gospel, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 through 36. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone and they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you hear what I hear? This week I opened the windows at our home. I could hear the birds singing, with the coffee maker percolating in the background, the washing machine spinning. Do you hear? What I hear in the carpool line I hear of the joys of school a new project for Black History Month I hear of the name calling and the hurt feelings on the playground I hear the persistent request to go to scoops to get an ice cream cone 
I hear the joyful buzz around the church offices as we welcome new faces into our workspace, our weekday home away from home. The energy, the enthusiasm. I hear the choir practicing hymns. I hear the copier printing bulletins. I hear the ring doorbell as people enter for study and fellowship. Do you hear what I hear? With the click of a button, I hear of invasions, explosions, war, the cries of the Ukrainian people. With a phone call, I hear a friend's heart who is breaking for his friends who are being told that they are unworthy, they are wrong and unaccepted by the messages of society because of their identity and orientation. Do you hear what I hear? I hear encouraging cheers of coaches and teammates and fans as I delight in the gift of children playing basketball at the YMCA and them learning what it means to be on a team, a community, working together for a common goal. Do you hear what I hear? I hear silence, the silence we've placed on others. I hear the silent tears of mental illness and depression. I hear the water, the waters of grace being poured into the baptismal font into each one of us today. Do you hear what I hear? I hear the echoes of I don't want to when it comes to forgiveness. I hear my own biases, my own insecurities, my own questions whirling in my head. Do you hear what I hear? I hear Peter in our scripture today longing to hold on to the mountaintop moment of the presence of the transfigured Christ alongside Moses and Elijah by asking if we could just stay up here on the mountain and have dwelling places. In church, do you see what I see? I see the love of grandparents and godparents on this baptism day. I also see a broken and weary world who loves power more than people. Do you see what I see? I see a table of lavish love ready for all to gather and to break bread as one body and drink of one cup. Do you see what I see? I see a world desperately in need of the transfigured Christ to shine brilliantly in our hearts. I see the mountaintops and the valley lows. I see Moses who understood rejection by the people of Israel and yet he still journeyed on to guide God's people to the promised land. I see the prophet Elijah who lived during a time of a wicked king and idol worship. I see the hate we cause by the words posted with account without accountability. Do you see what I see? I see a community coming together to shelter and feed our siblings in Christ with our warming shelter. Do you see what I see? I see the fog in our hearts and in our minds preventing us from fully glimpsing the glory of God. I see the flowers opening up in the memorial garden. Church, do you see what I see? Because I believe we see and hear what we want to. We choose to see what we want to hear and see. You see, I soon learned as a preacher, the pulpit's the most vulnerable place we find ourselves in. And I learned that no matter what I felt convicted to preach about by the stirrings of the Holy Spirit, no matter what God put on my heart to proclaim about the Word of God on a Sunday, no matter if it's my clearest message ever, people still hear what they want 
to hear. Following church at one of my very first churches, a congregant thanked me for what I said in the pulpit for sharing my personal views on a con 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 excuse me, controversial hot topic. It's not what I'm called to do. I'm called to preach the word of God. So it caught me off guard as that we were exiting the sanctuary. And I said, I'm curious to what you're referring to. Will you tell me what you heard me say? I was shocked. I was dumbfounded because that wasn't what I said at all, but it proved a point they were trying to make. So I followed up next, the next week. And together, we practice act, active and authentic listening so that not my words, but the words of the gospel of Jesus Christ were heard. We spent time practicing holy listening, the art of spiritual listening. Yes, my friends, we hear and we see only what we want to. We block out all the other things. We pretend they don't exist. That doesn't interfere with me, so I don't have to touch it. Better yet, I don't have to hear it or see it. So do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? In true confession, Bing Crosby's Christmas song has been on my mind since I read the story of the transfiguration before us today. I listened to this song as I pictured the majesty, the mystery, the exquisite sights and sounds of Jesus on the mountaintop, shining in glory, glowing Moses and Elijah with him, clothed in heavenly splendor in a light radiant cloud overshadowing them as they found themselves buried in the cloud, becoming deeply aware of God and the voice from the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Said the night wind to the little lamb, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star. Dancing in the night, said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees, with a voice as big as the sea, said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere, listen to what I say, the child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. Listen to him. Listen to Jesus, the one who God has identified as God's son, the chosen God's beloved son in whom God is well pleased. Church, we are to listen to him over all the things the noise, the sights, and the sounds that bombard us each and every day. We are to listen to him before turning to easy answers and quick fixes. We are to listen to Jesus over the negative talk we are trapped in because of the false narratives of society. We are to listen to him instead of tuning out the parts of the story we just really don't want to hear. Listen for God's presence. Listen for God's love. Listen for God in the living word, in times of doubt and in prayer when we are way too busy. Listen in times of disappointment and listen, my friends, for God's transforming power so that we might just be transfigured ourselves. We might just be made more beautiful into, God, into who God is creating us to be. In Alice Freiling's book, The Art of Spiritual Listening, Freiling helps us, the listener, to learn to listen to the persistent voice of God. She offers spiritual practices to hear God more fully, becoming more attentive to God's spirit in our daily lives. 
She says, listening to God is at the heart of the gospel message. To listen means not just to hear, but to give heed to, to pay attention to. Spiritual listening means paying attention to God. But we all know that recognizing the voice of Jesus is hard sometimes, isn't it? Freiling would say that listening to Jesus is a learned art. That we are to practice listening in love because listening to God is part of the journey of lifelong learning that we embark upon as disciples of Jesus Christ. And it is when we begin to listen to God, to be more attentive to God in the midst of the noise, that Henry Nouwen says, then, it is then we become obedient to God. The word obedient, my friends, comes from a Latin word which means listen. Listen to him, the voice from the heavens declares. Listen with love and awe. Listen by letting go of the need to be right. By setting aside our own agendas. Listen by letting go of preconceived opinions. Listen to him with a full awareness of self and what you bring to the listening. Listen in quiet. Stop and pause long enough to be attentive to the presence of God. Listen in the doubt. Listen to the questions that are living inside you. Listen in prayer, and sometimes that means stop talking. Listen to the why of our busyness. Is it so, is it so the busyness creates a noise that drowns out what we really need to hear and see about ourselves, what we really need to hear God saying to us? Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. Do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? So whether today we find ourselves up on the mountaintop in awe of the glory of God, or we place ourselves at the foot of the mountain, scratching our heads and rubbing our eyes, the transfiguration is a bridge between the season of Epiphany and the beginning of Lent. This here today, my friends, this Sabbath day, is a day that we rejoice in the glory of God revealed through Jesus shining before us. A day when we are reminded that through the next 40 days of wilderness wanderings, we are to truly listen to Jesus' presence in our lives. We get to tune in and focus on what Jesus yearns for us to hear on the journey ahead, the hard, rocky, beautiful road to the cross, and ultimately to the joy and the promise of the empty tomb where God's grace, church, is overflowing full to the brim for each and every one of us. Today we have witnessed, we have heard and we have seen the glory of the Lord shining before us. Today we have heard the voice of God declaring, this is my son, listen to him. What happens on this mountain, dare not stay on the mountain. Let God shine. <laughs>
be seated. Pray with me. Gracious, loving, and self-revealing God, we are in a strange, maybe even uncomfortable time of year. We linger between the seasons of Epiphany and Lent, between the joy of your appearing and the horror of your undoing at the hands of those who would not or could not embrace your way of life. We are like Peter, James, and John, waiting for your appearing and dazzling light and unmistakable clarity. We are in desperate need of a glimpse of Jesus, the way through the mix and mess of life. We pray for the people of the world whose individual names we may never know, whose faces flash across our TV screens in anonymity, those who bear the weight of the earth's pain. God, we know that your heart is in agony today over those you love in crisis. Gracious and loving God, we pray for the people in Ukraine today. We pray for those whose lives have become full of fear and uncertainty. We pray for those who are more concerned with maintaining power than caring for humanity. God, we pray and hold them in our hearts. We hold space to mourn with them. We hold space to long for peace with them. We are in need of a glimpse of Jesus, who is the truth. The truth that love is what you desire for us to experience and to give. The truth that peace is possible. Loving God, we long for your glory to fill the world and shine wherever there is darkness, disunity, persecution, or despair. We are in need of a glimpse of Jesus, who is life, inviting us to follow in his footsteps, to journey the paths of love and justice, to follow him in prayer, and to live a life of faith to make you known. Open us to your light, that we might see ourselves clearly, with all our fears and faults and faith, with all our desires and dreams and duties. Help us to live our lives as a place of your appearing, that like Peter, James, and John, we may come down from the mountain and set one foot in front of the other in your name and for your sake. Give us all, God, a greater love of your holiness, a greater delight in your mystery, and a greater joy in seeking your presence. We ask it through Christ Jesus, who revealed your will to us and taught us to pray to you as one body, saying, Our Father, that trod in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving is not a casual act. It relates God's work to our work. Peter writes, as each has received a gift, employ it for one another as good stewards of God's varied grace, that God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. Let us give as people whose work is linked and inspired by God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment. Let us give now our offering. of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see
be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, north and south, and south to sit at the table of the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when the disciples were up in the upper room, our risen Lord was at the table and he, he took the bread and he blessed it and broke it. And the disciples' eyes were opened. It is then that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. All are invited. So let us open our eyes and listen with our hearts so that we can share in this meal that has been prepared for us. So the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Overshadowing chaos, you spoke awesome creator and mountains were topped with mist. Singing brooks meandered through the fields. Created in your image, we had the audacity to demand our own way. Tempted by sin and death, you came to us masked as life and joy. You did not turn your face away, sending the prophets into all those ordinary places we lived to call us back to you. Though they spoke boldly of your hope, we did not listen to a single word. So you sent Jesus, your glory, to become flesh and blood so we might reshape, be reshaped as your beloved children. Holy are you, wonders of wonders, and your beloved reigns in peace. He set aside his glory to load us down with the riches of your grace and peace. He silenced our silly complaints so we might hang on the every word of hope 
of joy. He went to the cross ripping off the mask, uh, ripping off the mask of death, the death of mask, excuse me, so that we could see the face of an empty threat. As we celebrate your naming him, your chosen, as we prepare to listen to him with our lives, we speak of that mystery we call faith. Christ died to pull aside the curtain of death. Christ was raised to reveal the promise of new life. Christ will come to show us the face of God. So as we gather around your table, pour out these blessings of your spirit, transforming the simple gifts into that grace which changes our lives. As we feed upon your word, which is broken for us, we would go forth to speak boldly, reading a story to a lonely child, advocating for the voiceless, telling the good news to those who wonder in despair. As your cup of peace feels, fills us, we would go out into the world learning that where we do justice for the oppressed and rejected, we find ourselves in your presence. So then when all the time comes to an end and we gather in your glory with our siblings around the feast of grace and peace, we will sing your grace forever and ever. God and community, Holy One, greet us at this table, we humbly pray. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples. After giving thanks, he broke the bread. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for your sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Church, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Holy God, for you reveal yourself to us on mountain tops and in valley lows. You reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread, in the waters of baptism, in the songs of our hearts. May your revealing presence nourish us this day as we recognize your glory breaking into our lives. Help us to stay awake. Help us to listen. Help us to shine your light, your love, in your grace forevermore. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen.
my charge for us is to be still. To be still and know. To be. Listen. Do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see? Do you go from this place? May you see the face of Jesus Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ shining on you. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.